lesson nine, painting with light. The word photography means painting with light. Photo is light, graphy is graphics or like painting. And the more you can manage your camera, the better paintings with light you'll be able to make. To take good photos, the sensor inside your camera must receive the right amount of light. Otherwise, your images will be overexposed or underexposed. And managing the exposure is one of the key aspects of painting with light. Understanding how to manage exposure enables you to make more interesting and more creative photographs. Using your phone to take photos, most of the exposures are pretty generic. And this is because most people who take photos with their phone allow the phone to automatically adjust the exposure levels. And many beginner photographers with cameras do the same thing, at least until they've got a better understanding of how to manage their camera to make more interesting exposures. In photography, we talk about the exposure triangle. This refers to the three controls that manage the exposure. These are the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. The aperture is a diaphragm-like opening in the lens that opens and closes to let more or less light into the lens. It's similar to the iris in our eyes in the way that it functions. The shutter speed determines how long the shutter remains open. If it's open for a very short space of time, less light enters the lens. If it's open for a longer period of time, more light enters the lens. In bright situations, you want to use a faster shutter speed. When there's less light, like inside or at night, you may need to use a longer shutter speed. And the ISO setting manages how responsive the camera's sensor is to light. So in bright light, you want to use a lower ISO setting. And indoors or at night, other times where there's not so much light, you may need to use a higher ISO setting. When you have your camera or your phone set to any of the auto exposure modes, it's going to give you a fairly generic looking exposure. This is because it's doing what it's programmed to do. I'll explain more about these different modes in the upcoming lessons. Cameras and phones are programmed to make photos that look nice, that are well exposed based on the lighting and the contrast conditions. They'll usually make calculations about the light based on the brightest and the darkest and the midtones, and set the exposure to make an image that's not too dark or too bright. This will generally give you technically correct pictures, but these are not always the most interesting type of photograph. Learning to manage the controls of the exposure triangle gives you more creative control of the photos that you take. In the next eight lessons, you'll learn more about the exposure controls on your camera and how to manage them well for more creative picture taking. Lesson nine, practical exercise, painting with light. In this exercise, you'll get more familiar with the controls of the exposure triangle with your camera set to manual mode. For many of you, this might be a bit of a challenge, especially if you've been only used to using your camera or your phone on any of the auto exposure modes. But stick with me, it's a lot of fun. Set your camera to manual mode, that's the M setting on the dial. And if you're using a DSLR, use your live view for this exercise. If you're using a mirrorless camera, you can choose to use either live view or your electronic viewfinder. Doing this will help you see what exposure you're going to get when you take a photo. But your monitor or your electronic viewfinder must be set up the right way so that you can see the changes as you make them to your aperture, your shutter speed, and or your ISO. To check this, take your camera outside during the daytime and set your aperture to the highest f-stop number, that's the smallest aperture setting, and your shutter speed to the fastest speed, that's also the highest shutter speed number. Looking at your monitor, it'll probably look black or close to black, it'll be very, very dark. Now, open up your aperture to the widest setting, that's the lowest f-stop number, and then set your shutter speed to 1 125th of a second. As you're looking at the monitor, what can you see? Can you see once you've made those adjustments, the changes that are happening on your monitor or your electronic viewfinder? 
If not, you'll need to take a look online or in your camera manual to discover how to set your monitor or, and or your viewfinder so that it responds to the changes that you make when you adjust your aperture setting and your shutter speed setting and your ISO setting. It might take a little bit of time and effort to figure that out, but it's well worth it because it makes using manual mode so much easier. So once your camera is set correctly like this, you'll be able to see the adjustments in live view or in your electronic viewfinder as you make them. Your image, what you're seeing, should be getting lighter or darker depending on the adjustments that you're making. Alternatively, you could use the exposure meter, which you'll be able to see either in your viewfinder or on your monitor, and it'll look usually something like this. For this exercise, you'll get the most interesting results if you take the photos indoors on a sunny day. Choose one window and leave the curtains on that window open and draw the curtains on the rest of the room so it's quite dark inside. Then frame a composition that includes half the frame with what you can see through the open window and the other half of the frame is what's inside the room. Set your ISO to 400 and turn on the live view so that you're looking at your monitor to compose and take these photos. And with your camera set to manual mode, adjust your aperture and your shutter speed so what you can see on your monitor outside the window looks like you can see it with your eyes, so it looks correctly exposed. So just adjust your aperture setting, adjust your shutter speed setting till it gets looking about right and take a photo. Now adjust your aperture setting to a wider aperture, so a lower f-stop number, and also you might need to adjust your shutter speed to a slower shutter speed. This is why I've got my camera on the tripod for this one. And what you're aiming to do is now to get the other half of the frame of what's inside the room well exposed, so looking like you're seeing it with your eyes. So I'm having to adjust very slow down to about a fifteenth of a second here. And take another photo or two. If you don't have a tripod to use, you can rest your camera on a firm surface like a table, or you can alter your ISO setting to a higher ISO. This is just for the second photo that you take inside the room where it's a lot darker and the shutter speed might drop very slow. What are your observations? What are you seeing? Do the photos that you're taking look exactly like what you're seeing with your eyes? Probably not. This is because our cameras are much more limited in the tone range that they can capture in a single image than what we can see with our eyes. And understanding this will help you make more creative use of your camera. And this is the beginning of learning to paint with light. And just a reminder again, make notes about what you're doing and the changes that you're making and even why you're making those changes. And choose a couple of the best photos from this session to save them to your favorites folder. It will take you a bit of time and practice to master the settings of the exposure triangle, but it's worth putting that effort in because it allows you to have full creative control of your camera and how it records the light. Each of the three settings in the exposure triangle, the aperture, shutter speed and ISO, affects the other settings and how you learn to manage these will help you have a better, a deeper understanding of how your camera captures light and makes a really good image. The main points from this lesson are the word photography means painting with light. The exposure triangle is three functions of your camera that control exposure. These are the aperture, shutter speed and ISO. Practice this to improve your photography. Always think about exposure controls when you're taking photos.